Revelation chapter 2, beginning at verse number 18 through verse number 23. Amen. All right, Revelation chapter 2, beginning at verse number 18. And it reads, And unto the angel of the church in Theatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, thank you, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, mm -hmm. <laughs> and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her mm -hmm. into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Mm -hmm. Sound like some judgment right there. <laughs> and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. This morning I want to talk about time to change. Amen. amen. It's time to change. Amen. I'm going to say it one more time. Time to change. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that you uh, bow with me for a word of prayer. God, I thank you for this opportunity and I pray Oh, God, that you would not let this time be wasted. God, don't let this opportunity be wasted. But I pray, oh, God, that you would help me, God, articulate my thoughts in speech. Oh, God, that the youngest of us to the oldest of us would get a good understanding today, something that we could apply to our lives. And then, God, I pray, God, that you would feed the faith of your people, encourage and uplift us today, oh, God, convict and challenge us. Let your word do all the many things that I believe your word is able and capable of doing, even though I'm making a public presentation. I pray, oh, God, that you would speak directly into people's hearts and minds and directly to personal issues. I pray, God, that you would use me today in such a way that even though I'm standing, God, that your people would know, God, that you have spoken through me directly to them. And God, I pray, God, that you would open up their ears that they would hear. Open up their minds that they would understand. Give us the right perception today, God. And I pray that you would let this word penetrate the heart, God, that it would be powerful and effective. God, let these words be spirit and life. Hear my prayer, oh God. Hear my heart, God. Hear my mind. Hear my spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Time to change. Yeah. Amen. Time to change. Amen. Revelation has become one of the books a uh, few people diverge or dive into uh, because a lot of times when you read Revelation, it's difficult to understand. It's filled with a lot of things that's left up to interpretation, a lot of visions, signs that are left up to interpretation. Yeah. Sometimes it cites you to different places in the Bible. And if you don't have a really good or solid sound understanding of some certain things, it can be confusing. Yeah. Amen. And so and so when you come from Revelation, I believe that it's important not to just read it, but to understand it. And so the simplest parts of Revelation are the first few chapters, especially when he's writing to the churches. And and I want to take notice of that because where John is in the book of Revelation, he has been exiled for preaching 
the word of God. He yeah. has been exiled because he's been carrying the gospel. In that time, the gospel of Jesus Christ, what we now know as Christianity, it was not the popular or dominant religion of that day. And so if you came preaching or teaching anything other than the common day Judaism, you could be seen as a modern day terrorist, amen. And I like that. I like that 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 they had tried to stop. If you know anything about the, the book of Acts, if you know anything about what Jesus did, um, the men who came after Jesus were spreading his word, amen. And so it, it turns into a, a different kind of movement. And uh, let me just say it this way the country uh, uh, made them out to be like terrorists. But I like that. I like that when we see John, they have done everything to stop the gospel of Jesus Christ from going. Going forth, they put John on the Isle of Patmos. He's been preaching in the churches in Asia Minor. They sent him to Patmos, and here's what I like: in spite of what they try to do to stop him from doing it, he said, "Well, since I can't be there physically, I'ma send letters." Amen. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? I like it because it shows the resilience of John's mind, yeah, yeah. and I like that. I want to stress to you this morning that in order to be a Christian, in order to do what God has called you to do, you have to have a resilience mind. I want you to understand, you got to have a made up, no matter what it is you decide to do. That's true for Christianity, but it's also true for the things you want to accomplish in your life. If you want to be successful at all, if you want to see anything go better in your life, you got to have a made up mind. I'm going to tell you why. Because just because you decide to do one thing, that don't mean that everything about your life is going to cater yeah. to what you decided that you was going to do. I want you to hear me this morning. You got to have a resilient mind because you can say today that you're not going to do it, but tomorrow is going to challenge everything you said about today. And yeah. you got to have a made up mind. You got to be able to say no matter what happens, I'm going to hold my course of action. No matter yeah. Yeah. what happens, I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. And I like that it shows that John's Mind is resilient. In order to serve God, you have to have a made up mind that no matter what life throws at you, no matter what the devil tries to hit you with, that you are not going to turn around. I need somebody to hear me this morning that you got to have a made up mind. There has to come a time in your life that you make a statement uh, to the devil, that you make a statement to the world, that you make a statement to everything about your life that it don't matter what happens this is the role that I have chosen and nothing is going to make me change my mind about the direction that I'm going if don't nobody else do it I'm going to be the only one I want somebody to hear me I need us to have the understanding that you got to have a made up mind I like the way David says he says I will bless the Lord at all times it's, his mind is made up to not let the If you wake up in the morning and you say, I don't care what the day throws at me today, I'm not going to lose my cool. I'm going to stay happy. No matter what attitudes come my way, I'm not going to give an attitude back. Why? Because this is my mind being made up that no matter who says something negative to me, I'm going to stay positive. I need somebody to hear me this morning. Come on, come on. You got to have a resilient mind. Nothing is able to detour John from what he believes his purpose is. And even if they throw him out to the Isle of Patmos, he say, you can't stop me from doing what I know God has called me to do. And if we don't even take it spiritual, let's just take it physical. You got to decide if you want to save you some money, no matter how many times you got to start over, you just got to start over because uh, you got to have a made up mind. I like that when we read the Bible it shows that God is not the kind of God that's going to shield you from everything but he's going to allow some things to get through there and it, it can't be about what's happening on the outside. Throughout all of the stuff about Job the devil hit him with everything he could but his mind was made up and after he lost everything he said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away but blessed be the name of the Lord because his mind was made up. 
here's my question to you this morning. Is your mind really made up? Is your mind really made up? I know you said you was going to lose weight in January, but is your mind really made up? I know you said you was going to make some changes in January, but has your mind really been made up? Or as soon as things don't line up with the way you want them to go, do you change what you said that you was going to do? And here's my issue with a lot of us. Uh, my issue with a, with a lot of people is that they say it while the conditions are conducive. They commit yeah, yeah. while the conditions are conducive. But I want you to hear me this morning that you got to have a made up mind. He reveals his plan to John. He reveals his plan to John. And I want you to get this, that everything about God is about being revealed. Hear me when I say this, that you got to be praying for revelation. God, I need you to show me some things. Imagine that you have been, I know a lot of people pray for husbands and a lot of people pray for wives, but imagine that you can be standing around your husband or your wife, but they have not yet been revealed. I want you to get that. Uh, that you can be standing around your provision for your vision, but it has not yet been uh, revealed. I want you to catch it. That, that everything about God is about being revealed. You can be passing by your miracle every day. Understand this. Here's all the people around Jesus, right? They don't really know who he is. The woman with the issue of blood comes along and is able to get something from Jesus that everybody else is around him that is not getting. Why? It is because she has a, a revelation. I want you to understand it. That you can be standing around something. You can be touching it. You can be handling it all day, every day. But until God reveals it to you. And I want somebody to understand it, that sometimes God, he takes the scales. Oh, that's why I'm praying. Reveal to me, God, who is really my friend. Reveal to me, God, who is really against me. Reveal to me, God, the things I need to engage in. I want you to understand, you gotta start praying for revelation, God. Reveal it to me, God. If you don't understand why you went through the, some of the things that you went through, ask God to yeah, reveal it. When he takes the covers off, it'll make sense to you. Once he pulls the sheets back, it'll, it'll make sense to you. God is saying, John, I got something that I want to show you. And this is why when you wake up in the morning, I know you want to get on Facebook, but, but you ought to be asking God for a revelation. God, what, where do I need to be working today? Where is the blessing at today? Where is the provision at today? God, where is the contract today? I need somebody to hear me this morning praying for revelation. And he says to Theotira, he says, I know your works. I like when he says, I know your works because it shows that God knows the things that you've been doing. Yeah, Let me yeah, encourage yeah. you. If you've been doing right, I want you to hear me that God sees the good that you've been doing. Somebody needs to hear that because people don't always tell you when you're doing right. People don't always give you the pat on the back that you need. But I like that Jesus comes along. He says, I know your works. I know what you've been doing behind closed doors. I know I know the, the love and the charity that you've been doing. I know all of the good things that you're doing is, is God not sitting back waiting for you to mess up. I like yeah, yeah. that he shows that he, he can see, he can commend the good that you do. And sometimes I need God to tell me I'm doing a good job. Sometimes I need God to give me the encouragement. That that's why I come to church because I need God to let me know he sees the good. But he says notwithstanding, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have something against you. And I want us to understand this morning that God is not just there to be your personal cheerleader but sometimes God got to let you see some yeah. things about you that you need to, that's the word again, change I know some of you yeah. going to turn me off on YouTube this morning, some of you going to turn me off on Facebook because I said that word change that God will show you, you've been doing good on this area Minister Marcus, you've been doing well on this area but but there are some things that I need you come on uh, to refocus on and, yeah. and you can just be real in here and there are some things that you have done right this year, but there are also some things that you need to work on. And I like I like that we serve the kind of God who's not just there to tell me I've been doing all things right, but, but he's there to help me to do a little bit better. And that's the kind of God that I need. I don't need a cheerleader. I don't need a yes man. But I need somebody to tell me when I need to tighten up on some areas and I need some guidance through him. Most people is looking on the outside. I thank God that he He's able to look beyond what you got in the bank. He's able to look beyond your title. He's able to look beyond your status. 
status and he's able to say, oh yeah, you got a good position at work, but you starting to get a little greedy. I need you to watch. I need somebody to hear me. Yeah, you, you got a lot of money in the bank, but you starting to get a little arrogant. I need you to, come on, I need you to calm down. I need the kind of God that is able to see the things that are good, but also the things that I need to work on. Why? Because sometimes when you have success in your life, it makes you want to justify the sin in your life. Sometimes when you're doing good in one area, it makes you want to justify the, the areas of your life that you know you probably not doing. I need somebody to hear me this morning. And sometimes you can have a, a you can be a public success at the same time being a private failure. And the kind of God you serve, he, he's not way like that. I like the way he says it, that God is not a respecter of persons and you can't fool him with a title and you can't fool him with a position but, yeah. but he's able to look beyond. He doesn't yeah. care about your title or your status or how much money you got. He will remind you that he don't see the public person you portray yeah. but he sees the private person that you really are and that's why you need you some God on your side. You need God to tell you he's not there to make you rich but he's there to give you moral and integral guidance. He's there to keep your heart from turning evil when he starts blessing your life. He's there to help you stay on track. Get this, that David is a man after God's own heart yeah, but he yeah. still has to pray for God to lead him That's in it. the paths of righteousness. Why? Because sometimes you can justify what you know is wrong when you, uh, when you have some success in your life. And I want you to understand that God is not going to overlook the bad just because you're doing some good, but he's going to hold you. Here's another word, accountable. He, he going to hold you accountable when everybody else will overlook it and give you excuses. But God is not a yes man. He going to hold you accountable. He He's watching. He says, you've been doing good, but there's some things I need you to to tighten up some screws because this is what he says, you suffer that woman Jezebel. And I want you to get this, Jezebel in this story is not the persona that we know as Jezebel in the Old Testament. But this Jezebel in, 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 in Revelation, he talks about her uh, seducing the saints yeah, yeah. to commit fornication. Oh, ouch, and amen. Let's put the seatbelts on because we going there this morning. Yeah, seducing, yeah. he says you have allowed her, get that, uh, to seduce. And I want you to get this. Uh, that, that I believe it's a word for us because sometimes, so many times in our lives, oh God, uh, we allow things to stay around that we probably should have cut off a long time ago. I want you to hear it. He said uh, that you have allowed that woman Jezebel to stay around. And, and I don't know who needs to hear that, but that's an ouch and amen because yeah. uh, there are some habits that we have allowed to uh, stay around. There are some things that we have allowed to uh, stay around. There are some people who we have allowed to uh, stay around. And, and what they do is to seduce. This is why God, he says to the nation of Israel, I want you to go in the land and possess it but I need you to completely destroy the enemy or else they will become a snare. And it is a trap. It is something that you tripped over had you moved. And I, I like the, uh, the analogy because all the time I tell my boys, Get your shoes out the walkway. When they were when they were boys, when they was young, they would come off, kick the shoes out. They get it from the daddy. They get it. They get it from the. You take your shoes off. You don't feel like putting them in. But but here's the thing: is the thing is, is that not just putting them there, but leaving them there. And, and you don't realize that while you're walking through the house on your way to the kitchen, you trip on something. But you trip on something that you would not have tripped on had you got it out. To, uh, got it out the way. And this is. This is what this is our lives. Our lives, we have things that we have left there, and they end up becoming a snare to your forward progress. And this is why Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, has to let you remind you that you gotta lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily uh, besets you. Because what you allow to linger today will pull you down tomorrow. What what you allow to around today uh, will trip you up tomorrow. And, and he says you have allowed her to seduce. How many of you have, can, can, can honestly
honestly say it, testify along with me that you have allowed it uh, to pull you in the wrong direction. You have let it distract your mind. You have allowed it to control your decisions. You have let it linger and, and you're wondering why God hasn't done nothing better in your life and it's because you have allowed some things to hang around that you should have cut off a, a long time ago. He yeah, said yeah. you allowed that woman Jezebel to seduce my saints into fornication and, and I believe that that's a word for somebody in here because because sometimes we so bad, we so hard on the homosexuals not realizing that fornication is also a sin, not, not realizing that adultery is also a sin and, and if you don't call out the homosexuals let's call out everybody that's operating in the spirit of here's the word, lust that's what it's called, and if you a homosexual you in lust, if you a fornicator you're in, the, I wish I had somebody in here, to, if you moving in adultery. It's, it's lust. And guess what? You can say because you're not gay, but let me put everybody in the same category. It's all lust. And he said you have allowed it. You have allowed it. You yeah. say, but you still sin it. And I need somebody to hear me. And we can't judge nobody because this is what the Bible says, that all have sinned and, and come short and still coming short. Uh, but we are freely justified by his grace. Uh, I'm not telling you you're going to hell. I'm just saying you have allowed it to linger in your life and maybe you would see the blessings of God a little bit more if you cut it off a little bit. Uh, I wish I had some real people this morning that he says you have allowed to let it linger. You have yeah. allowed to let it linger and I want you to understand that this morning when we talk about it's time for a change. It's time to get rid of some things from your life and, and maybe that's the word. Maybe it's not just deep Maybe it's not going into the deep mysteries or the deep treasures. Maybe it's not breaking down all the divisions and signs in Revelation. But it's just getting you to understand that it's time now for a change. It's time now to decide to remove some things from your life. And I like the way he says it. I gave her space. I gave her space to remove it. I gave you time to remove it. I gave you the space of grace because God understands that you can't just stop doing something that you've been doing for 20 years. You you know you shouldn't have started it, but you started it anyway. And uh, You know you shouldn't have done it and fell in it, but you fell in it anyway. And God got to give you some grace. You ought to just say, God, thank you for grace and thank you for mercy. Thank you for loving me through some stuff. Thank you for loving me through some stuff that I shouldn't have got in in the first place. Uh, but you kept on loving me. And he said, I gave her the space. Get it? I gave her the space to get it right. And I thank God that he's able to love you through some stuff. Now, here's what I want you to understand. That God will be patient with you through your weakness, but he will not tolerate your wickedness. I'm going to stress that again. He will be patient with you through your weakness, but he will not tolerate your wickedness. In other words, you know the stuff that you can cut off doing, but, but you continue to do it as opposed to those things that you're struggling with. I need some real people. And this is what he says. He says, I gave her the space to cut it off because he understands that uh, quitting to smoke cigarettes after you've been smoking for 20 years, you may not just cut them off today, but he needs to see you trying to cut it off. I need somebody to hear me. He needs to see some effort from you. We talking about it's time for a change and I want somebody in here to understand that there is something about your life that God is saying I gave you time I gave you space to get it right and now the ball is in your court. I need somebody to hear me that God is saying there's something about your life that I need you uh, to change and here's what he said he says, I gave her space to repent, but she did not repent. And, and now I'm not calling nobody out in here, but here's what I will say. If you read in the story of, uh, of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, how many Bible readings I got? Yeah. Uh, what, what happens is, is the enemy, the, the snake comes to Eve. And if you look at those verses that Eve battled back and forth with the snake, there are a few verses that he questioned her and she questioned him. And, but then when she brought the fruit to Adam, Adam didn't ask no questions. Yeah, he yeah. just, uh, I wish I had some Bible readers. And, and here's the understanding that at least Eve put up a fight. Yeah. But Adam just, uh, he well, just said it. And, and I want you to understand, it's a difference when you 
put up a fight and lose as opposed to losing because you didn't even put up the uh, you didn't even put up a fight. And this is why I want to encourage my church people. And his God is saying, when I gave you space, I wanted to see you put forth some effort to cut off some of those things that you should have cut off. He said, if you said you was gonna lose weight, why you still got ice cream in the freezer? Why why you just won't throw it away? If you if you said you're gonna quit smoking, why you still got cigarettes in the console? Why not just I need somebody to hear me? I need to see you put forth some effort to make some changes. This is what God is saying. It, it ain't supposed to be deep, it's just supposed to get you delivered. I, I need somebody to hear me. He said, I need you to to change it. I gave her the space to change, but but she didn't change. And then that can minister to all of us in here that God has given us the space of grace to get some things right and to set some things in order. But we didn't even try to set them in order. We just continue to live uh, the way that we yeah. wanted to live. And, and here's what I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that, that maybe God is telling you to change. You got to get some things under control. You got to get some discipline about about your spending habits. You yeah, gotta yeah. get some discipline about your eating habits. You gotta change the way you have your attitude. I need somebody to get it this morning. And when I say it's time for a change that God has given you the space to change the way you talk to people, yeah. but you still, I need somebody to get it. And God yeah. has given you the space to get your heart together, but you still walking around bitter and sad and angry. Oh, He's giving you space to clean some things out, uh, but you still you're holding it in. And, and my word for you this morning is it's time to make some uh, to make some changes. And, and God will help you. He'll help you get your life back on track. He'll help you set some things in order. But he's got to see that you're willing to make some changes. He'll help you reveal some things that have been broken in your life. He'll help you get your mind back in the right place. But he needs to see you make some uh, some changes. Somebody yeah. gonna get it in a minute. That God just sent me to tell you it's time to make some changes. Yeah. You have allowed laziness to be a part of your life for too long. You have allowed procrastination yeah. to be a part of your life for so long. You have allowed things to just pull you any and every which way yeah. for too long. It's time now for you to make some yeah, make some yeah. changes. And, yeah. and this is what he does. He says. Oh, he says, I gave her the space to repent and she repented not. And this is what God does. And I'm seeing my time. He says, well, since she didn't repent, I'm going to allow the consequences of her behavior. And I want you to hear me. We may not shout today, but we will be delivered. He yeah. says, I'm going to let it happen to her. And sometimes God has to remove the hedge when you stubborn and stuck in your ways. You you just so stuck and, and hard headed that you want to go your own way. And God God is saying, I'm too much God to, to force you to do it, but, but sometimes he'll allow the consequences of your own actions to, to redirect your mind. And, and I want somebody to hear me. It's not that God don't love you no more, but it's that God is tired of trying to give you grace when you already made up your mind. You're going to be greedy. He's tired of giving you grace when you already made up your mind. You're going to be mean and lustful. He's, he's tired of giving you grace. And he said, well, since you want it, I'm going to let you have it yeah. so you'll recognize that the consequence oh. will make you change your mind. And, and sometimes God will let your He'll let your choice unravel into chaos. He'll let your decision unravel into chaos and still love you. And, and sometimes you just got to let your, let your child touch the stove so he see that the stove is hot. Sometimes you got to just let them burn themselves, stick your finger in the fan so you see that the fan is going to hurt. I need somebody to hear me in God. He'll back up off you for a while. If you say you want it, I'm going to let you have it so you will see that you don't really want it. He says, uh, they're going to have to go through a great tribulation. And, and it's sad to say, but I want somebody to hear me this morning. That, that here's what he said, and I'm going to try to wrap this up because he says, I'm going to give to every man according to their works. Remember what he said at the beginning. He says, I know your works. And at the 23rd verse, he says, I'm going to reward every man not according to their status, not according to how much money they got, but according to 
their works. I need somebody to catch it there. You don't have to work for salvation, but but you do have to work for a reward. And in other words, that you'll be saved, but but you will never see a manifestation of God in your life if you haven't been doing uh you haven't been doing the work. And, and this is why I want to encourage somebody. He says, how whatever way you decide that you want to go, you going to get the consequences of your actions. And I need somebody to hear me this morning. I want to encourage you because somebody don't understand that in order to see different things, you got to do different things. And in order to get different results, you got to do different actions. And this is what God is saying. He said, you don't want to see tribulation. Don't put yourself on tribulation street. You got to, he says, change. He says, unless they repent. And this is what I like. I like about God what he does. He says, now, I'm going to let you see the great tribulation unless you, unless they repent. That's what he said. Yeah, he says, yeah. unless they repent. And this is what I like about God. What I love about God is that as long as you on the road, you'll get what the road uh, is designed for you to get. But yeah, at yeah. any time when you decide to change your course of action, I like that God, he will redeem the time. It's, yeah. it's all of these years, God, I've been walking to the left and you told me to go right, but today I'm going to turn my course of action in. and God is the kind of God that, that when you make the change, he'll uh, start making some changes yeah. in your life. And, and this is what I love about it. it don't matter what you did yesterday. If you choose to do right today, God is saying I'll bless it. If, you, if you've been living all 20 years in, in the negative and you turn today to be will bless it. Yes. I love that about God. He says, now, if you've been doing it wrong and you decide to make it right, he says, I'll alleviate all of the curses that are on your yes. life. Yes. And from today, you can walk, uh, walk in blessing. And this yes. is my word for you. Before I go offline, my word for you is that God is saying, I'm ready to make some changes in your life, but the change has to start with you. And I need somebody in here to think of one good thing that you can decide to do different from today forward. I'm going to change it, God, because I want to see you do something different in my life. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. When you change, that's when things will change in your life. Thank you so much for watching, or if you're listening, I want to say thank you as well. Never miss a Bible study or a sermon when you subscribe, and if you're on YouTube, tap the bell so you never miss when I post.